We're in this incredible underground lab at Barnes Bullets. I'm with the lab supervisor, Greg Sloan. And Greg, if you can, take me through the shooting process from the bullets perspective and tell me a little bit about this incredible equipment you guys are using here. You know, here at Barnes, we want to ensure that our quality control, that our performance is met. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of different ballistic instrumentation. We have quality control measures. During the manufacturing process, we do a lot of testing. We test a lot of different bullets. We test a lot of different cartridges. They all behave differently, and we also produce a lot of different types. But during that process, we test them to ensure that that product spec's met, that the customer expectations are met, so they're going to perform downrange. All right, Greg, I've got a magazine of awesome 6.5 Creedmoor ammunition. I'm going to put it in this Remington PCR. I'm going to close the bolt. Now, if I am the round inside that chamber and I drop this trigger, tell me what happens to me, because I'm sure it's like a violent birth. Yeah, so at that point, we're talking about internal ballistics. So once you pull the trigger, the firing pin's going to drop. Okay. It's going to strike the primer. Right. The primer's going to ignite. It's going to send a flash up through the flash hole of the shell. At that point, the powder, the propellant, it's going to ignite and it's going to burn. If that case is inside of that chamber. That pressure builds and peaks out. It's pushing that bullet out. As that bullet exits the case, it's going to enter into the throat, into the rifling. The rifling is going to start to rotate and spin it, and that pressure drops off. Once we exit the muzzle, we're now talking about external ballistics. What happens in flight? What kind of RPM once I get to the end of that muzzle and I start to hit the air? What's that look like? Yeah, so once we're exiting, you know, this one's roughly going about 2,700 feet per second muzzle velocity. Uh -huh. you know, with this bullet and this twist rate, it's probably around that 250 to 280,000 RPM. So I'm free, I'm out in the air, there's a lot of forces going on. Uh, tell me what those forces look like, G's, anything like that? Yeah, so obviously depending on atmospheric conditions, there's going to be different effects on it. But right off the bat, gravity's going to grab hold, you know, wind drift's going to come into play as it goes down range. Basically all that drag is robbing energy off of that projectile. Wow. You know what, I think I want to get behind the gun and try this out a little bit. Greg, so walk me through uh, what you got here on the screen. Okay, so in this indoor range we have an acoustic target with an Ehlers system. So we're shooting through the chronograph, so we're measuring muzzle velocity. We also have downrange acoustic microphones that pick up the bullet and we measure dispersion. So we can look at group size, we can look at downrange velocity, ballistic coefficient, all those things. Wow. So we actually have a target at 100 yards and a target at 300 yards. So the same five shots, we're looking at and we're shooting simultaneously. So we can look at kind of that linear dispersion and how the group's grown from one to three. Excellent. Well, wow, there's a lot of data going on there. So how does this tie into a little bit of what we were talking about? So once the bullet's out of the barrel, you know, we're, we're flying, we're at our velocity. Um, what else can we determine? So we can get our ballistic coefficient from here? Yeah, this system does measure ballistic coefficient. You know, so we're looking at muzzle velocity here, we can look at standard deviation, and then we can look at group size. So as you can see, we've got a 0.7 five shot group at 100 yards, which this one translated to a 2.5 inch group at 300 yards. Ah, so obviously the further point. you go out, the group is going to grow. This gives us a, a, a better idea of what's going on with the bullet, what it has to go through, and then you know when we get out on the range, I'd like to maybe shoot a little further and talk about some of the things that are happening a little farther out. For sure, sure. definitely. Greg, we're here with the tried and true 308. We're at 1,000 yards, we're gonna stretch it out a bit and see what it'll do. What can we expect at this distance? You know, we're obviously gonna get some drops, some drift. We've accounted for that. We've dialed it in the turret. We've accounted for the change in elevation. You know, the wind's pretty calm right now. We're shooting 175 grain precision match load. It does pretty good, good BC, but it is a 308, but very capable at 1,000 yards still. So let's give it a shot and see what it does. Good impact. All right, so we got some good impacts. Um, it's pretty consistent at that range. Yeah, very capable. Like I said, we always have wind to worry about, um, but you know, it's still supersonic. We're going 1450, maybe 1500 feet per second at that distance. So extremely capable. We can predict for it, we can account for it and adjust. All right, so if we go a little further, what's gonna happen? I'm thinking a mile. Can we shoot that and see what happens? We'll give it a shot, see what it does. All right, let's do it. Okay, that one was low, about two plates low. Uh, 
about a foot below your last shot. All right, so we're pretty inconsistent at a mile with the 308. Tell me what's happening in that difference between 1,000 yards and a mile. Yeah, so the bullet slowed down quite a bit. You know, that extra 760 yards has a lot of effect. That much more energy has been robbed. That bullet's gone transonic and now subsonic. So at 1,000 yards, say we were 1450 still, at a mile, we've dropped below 1,000 feet per second. So that bullet's starting to tumble. It's starting to pitch, it's starting to move. It's inconsistent and it's unpredictable. You know, so we can try to account for wind and drop, but it's not gonna be consistent at all. There's too many variables. So what are our options if we do want to shoot at miles? What are some of the other calibers we could look at? You know, you're looking at, you know, even the big 50 BMG, but reasonable, you know, your 338s, your 30 cal magnums with high BC bullets, your bigger sevens, um, six fives with the right bullet, and even the six mm Creedmoor. Okay, so we got a lot of options outside of the 308. Yeah, at the end of the day, you just got to keep it supersonic at impact. So you can extend that maximum effective range and you can have accurate and consistent repeatable hits. That makes sense.